Hello everyone. Uh, I'm King Still, working as an assistant professor uh, in Vivo Chidambaram College, Tutukuli. I would like to welcome each and every one of you to this 10 days crash course for NET and SET. Also, I would like to extend my deep sense of gratitude to the patron of our institution, a respected and honorable secretary. Shri APC Chokalingam sir and a dynamic principal, Dr. C. Virabhav sir, of course, the convener of this program, and the IQAC coordinators, Dr. John Prince sir and Dr. Radhika ma'am, for organizing such a wonderful event. And I'm so glad that I'm being a part of it. Uh, as we are stepping on to the day four, we're going to discuss a concept called business finance. One of the easiest. Uh, element of uh, commerce discipline this term is something that we regularly come across and uh, many people think that the finance is something uh, uh, which is top of their head which is uh, very tough to understand but i don't think so because this is something that we regularly come across each and every day and even a co common layman can understand what it is exactly. So we are moving on to the concept called finance. When we say finance, it is all about dealing with funds. When we deal with funds, you know, every each and every day of our life, we deal with funds. We deal with money. But is that we is that can be called as finance? Is a question. But when you deal with money, if there is three if there are three criteria. You can call that fund as, as finance. That should be acquisition and conservation and distribution. If there is an acquisition of fund and utilization of fund and distribution of fund, if these three elements are there in a particular fund, is, that can be called as a finance. Any definition or any author who come up with a meaning or a definition, you can find these three elements in it. For example, you know, when you don't have money in your business, you want to uh, invest money. When you have lesser money or when you don't have money to invest in a business, how you acquire those money is acquisition. And how do you invest it in different financial avenues? And how do you earn uh, money or earn profit out of it? You know, the ways and means in which that you distribute your funds and investment, invest in different avenues is called as uh, conservation or utilization of funds. When you have got enough return, when you want to return it to the people who have contributed money or who have contributed capital to your business, that, um, that thing is called as distribution. When acquisition, conservation or utilization, when distribution, when these three elements are there, when you deal with fund, that fund can be called as finance. So when these three elements are involved in a particular business, that uh, business is called as, I mean, that kind of uh, finance is called as business finance. When these three elements are involved in a business uh, to do, to carry out your business smoothly or to achieve your overall objectives, that finance can be called as a business finance and this is a simple definition that you can um, uh, understand about the whole concept of finance and when you deal with business finance there is an important uh, element called asset when you purchase asset or goods or raw materials for the other flow of economic activities is called as business finance is one of the easiest uh, definition that we come across so when a common uh, uh, life when we refer as an asset we would say we would refer to an object which has a physical evidence but when in financial terms if you want to refer uh, something as an asset these are the criteria you know in financial perspectives asset can be broadly classified into three different types one is the, uh, tangible assets of course there are other uh, forms of asset as well, but the broad classification can be of only three elements three types First one is tangible assets The assets are uh, the objects which has a physical evidence like plant and machinery 
like laptops or computers, tables, chairs, vehicles, and all that stuff can be called as an tangible asset. The assets which can be touched, which can be felt, or which can be seen can be classified as an tangible asset. Intangible asset cannot be seen, cannot be touched, but it has a value. The values might be, you know, it may be either appreciating or depreciating in financial terms. For example, the technical know-how, the patents that you have, the copyrights that you have, even the reputation that you have can also be coming out of the intangible assets. Because even the reputation that you have for your company has some value. The, the third important element is a financial asset. It refers to the securities that your company has. The shares that it has invested, that it has issued, the financial instruments that it has, or the cash deposit, or you know, um, the commercial papers, the treasury bills that it has, can also be classified as financial assets. CD refers to the certificate of deposits. So all these assets, uh, you know, involved in a particular business. When I said, uh, when I uh, different, I mean, define the finance. It, it has three different elements, right? When you define about the functions of the finance, that will also be coming into the picture. The, the same three elements will be coming into. How you acquire your fund is called as financing decision. How you acquire, how you acquire money. What are the modes in, in which you, that you accumulate money for uh, smoothly running your business is called as financing decision. You know, the functions are broadly cla uh, classified into two different types. One is managerial function and the managerial function, the first and foremost function is the financing function, which deals with how you acquire money. And the second one is investment decision. You have acquired enough money, but how do you invest it in different investment avenues? There are so many financial avenues in which you can invest, right? How do you invest your money? It is called as investment decision. Okay, that's where we discuss about long term. Uh, we discuss long term investment and short term investment. So uh, those th two elements have come into the picture. And the third element is that how do you distribute your money? Okay, so that is called as dividend uh, decision, distribution. Okay, in business, in corporate finance or in business finance, that's the important element. How do you distribute your return to the shareholders? Or debenture holders so that is distribution and one more is that liquidity function so that's what we are going to discuss and these are the basic functions of finance uh, we would see it in the first session and in the next session we would go deeper into it each and every uh, decisions the first decision is that financing decision in financing decision as i said before it deals with the complete uh, you know detail of how to acquire money Okay, but when you dig deep into it, deciding the optimum capital structure is the important uh, key concept of financing decision. What do you mean by capital structure at first? You know, capital structure, it means the structure of capital, you know, uh, it just means, you know, whether the complete capital is shareholders fund or is there any debt content? The mixture of debt content and the shareholders fund is what we call as capital structure you know if the entire capital is a borrowed capital for it, it means the entire capital is acquired by distributing shares you know it means your entire return will be of shareholders fund the return will be equivalent to the shareholders fund because the return has to be distributed to the shareholders. So it might sound like a little weird thing because you yearn and you distribute won't be a good choice. Okay, so, so you decide that you can keep deep inches into it. Okay, when you have deep inches into it, of course the risk is a little lesser. You might have, you can have a sink fund with you, which means sink fund, you might be knowing that. Sink fund is a fund that you allocate each and every year to redeem the debentures that you have issued. Okay, then you have to keep certain amount with you. So that is one thing. So uh, when your capital structure is full of, uh, share, I mean, uh, share, it is less risky, but then uh, you won't be having any, any return. 
So if you decide to have a debt content with you, what is the proportion of a debt and what is the proportion of share? Deciding this is the capital structure. So capital structure is the main, it means that the mixture of debt content and the share content. So that has to be optimum. Optimum means, it means that it is decidable at a point where there is no loss. I mean, where you, where the risk is uh, less and the return is high. That is what that is what we mean as optimum capital structure. So you have to decide your structure in such a way that the risk is very low, but the return that you earn out of it is very high. So financing decision is that deciding uh, your uh, financing. I mean, uh, your uh, acquisition of funds through shares and through debt in a proportion where it earns enough return but the risk is very less that decision is called as uh, financing decision and the next one is financial leverage as i said before the if the entire content if the entire capital is a shareholders fund then the return will be equivalent to the shareholders fund the firm's return will be equivalent to the shareholders fund when in the absence of uh, debt it would be the scenario but in the presence of uh, uh, debt it won't be the situation right so due to which you know whatever the impact that the shareholders fund is facing due to the volatility or due to the change in the firm's profit is called as financial leverage once again i tell you due the you know uh, the change in the shareholders fund due to the firm's return the change in the firm's return is called as financial leverage so having deciding an optimum capital structure and having a, an optimum financial leverage is called as financing decision how do we decide that the financial leverage is good how do you decide that the optimum we have the optimum capital structure it's because the one of the element in which you can identify that is the when you when your share in the market has I mean uh, when the share value in the market is increasing it means that you in the capital structure that you have decided is little optimal so that's one of the key thing that you can measure it on the second decision of finance is investment decision as i said before how you, how you in, uh, acquire funds and then how do you invest it that's where the capital budgeting decision comes into the picture for example, you are going to invest your money, how far your investment is going to be viable, how far it is profitable. So that uh, analyzing stuff is what we call as investment decision. So here we would consider two uh, different, uh, two very important uh, things. First one, evaluation of prospective profitability of new investments. You are going to invest in something new. How far it is profitable, how far it is viable, how, how long you can earn profit. That is the first element in capital budgeting decision. And the second is measurement of cutoff rate. So that is also one of the important thing I will tell you in the uh, next session. Not in the next session, in the, after uh, discussing the next point. Risk and return trade-off. This is something that, you know, uh, we, it is very obvious that when the risk is very less, obviously the return will be very less. When the risk is very high, obviously the return also will be very high. So, but as an investor, I won't be dare enough to take too much of risk in the initial stages. Even no investor will be taking too much of risk because too much of risk is not good. Even no risk is not good. So every investor want to take a uh, decision where the risk is minimum and the return is acceptable or reasonable. So, Trade-off, it means where the risk and return or the return is high and the risk is very less. So at a particular point, it means. So that is what we, we mean as risk and return trade-off. Okay. The measurement of cutoff rate, that is what we want to discuss. And if you want to discuss that, you have to know about opportunity cost of capital. Opportunity cost of capital, in a simple perspective, I have 10,000 rupees in my hand, for example. So I want to invest that. So whenever I take an, whenever I think about investment in financial terms, it means that I'm going to sacrifice my money. I'm going to take my risk. Okay, I'm going to take some risk. For that risk, that risk should be paid off to me as a return, right? 
So opportunity cost of capital is that if I have 10 rupees, 10,000 rupees in my hand, without taking risk, I can earn something. For example, if I put it in fixed deposit in a scheduled bank or in a, any bank, if I put it in fixed deposit, I'm sure that I would earn money. After a year, after two years, after three years, I'm sure that my capital or the amount that I have will be appreciating in terms of interest. So basically, so without taking any risk, I'm earning something as an interest. All right? But opportunity cost of capital means, you know, when I take a risk, that risk, I mean, the amount of return that I'm getting out of that risk will be much higher, much, it must be higher than the amount that I'm earning without taking any risk. So the return that I'm getting must be higher enough due to the sacrifice that I make, due to the decision that I make, okay, uh, of taking any risk. That is what we mean as opportunity cost of capital. That should be always higher than the risk free rate of return. Okay, so we have certain returns without taking any uh, risk with that return is called as a risk free rate of return. So opportunity cost of capital should be higher than that. So that is what we mean as that. Okay, so uh, if I think that having 10,000 rupees in my hand, I should earn at least 1000 rupees. Okay, so that is my expected rate of return. Okay, that expected rate of return should be higher than the opportunity cost of capital. So deciding that expected rate of return is what we call as measurement of cutoff rate. Okay, so what is my expected rate of return? At what rate I expect my investment to earn me, uh, to give me return is what we call as cutoff rate. Okay, that uh, decide uh, that decision uh, is taken in this particular arena called investment decision. That is the second decision of financial management. And one more thing is that replacement decision. Okay, replacement decision comes into the picture when your assets are reproductive. Uh, sorry, when your assets are uh, not productive enough, or when your assets are no no more in the usage condition. So that that's where you have to replace your assets. Okay, your replacement uh, decision is also called this investment decision. Okay, so here first one we discussed about how we are going to acquire money, and then in the second decision, how we are going to invest them. Third one is that dividend decision. Okay, you have invested, you have got some money back as a profit because you have earned, you have measured your profit before you invest them. So you have got some profit out of it. Now we are going to divide, I mean, uh, distribute those incomes to your shareholders or, or even that uh, debt, all, I mean, debit shareholders. So in which first thing, dividend uh, policy in the dividend decision, first thing you have to be deciding uh, what is my payout ratio and what is the retention ratio. If you earn one rupee, if you earn, if your firm earns one rupee, Okay, what is the proportion that you're going to uh, retain those one, uh, I mean, retain, uh, uh, what is the proportion you're going to retain and what is the proportion that you're going to give out? The proportion that you're going to ret uh, retain is called as a retention ratio. The proportion that you're going to pay out to your shareholders is called as payout ratio. Okay, uh, you might ask another question that why uh, uh, I should retain something because you are you should have some capital, you should have some uh, money with you for the future expansion, for future decisions. Okay, uh, what would happen when I pay out all the amount that I'm earning? So I would have enough investment, uh, the investors would be interested to invest in my uh, company so that I would have the highest capital. Now, in dividend decisions, one of the important thing is that the retention ratio is deciding your growth rate as well. So we will discuss in the next sessions if possible. Okay, so the retention ratio has to be with you. If at all the, you, read, you don't retain any money, it won't be good enough for the company to go ahead in future decisions, right? So that is one of the things. So retention ratio has to be decided and payout ratio has to be decided as we say, uh, as we said in the initial things, it has to be optimum as well. And the bonus shares, right? The amount that you earn has to be distributed to the shareholders in the form. It has to be distributed to the shareholders in the form of dividend. If 
you don't want to, uh, you know, uh, in such cases, the company does not want it to distribute it as a cash. Normally, dividends are paid in, in the forms of cash. It, in this particular thing that you want some capital, you want to distribute your profit, you want to convert your return into the capital, what you can do is that instead of dividend, in such cases, you can distribute shares for dividend. For example, instead of giving you 10 rupees as a dividend, I'll give you 10 rupees share. So what you are, I mean, uh, what is happening here is the capital that the company has is increasing, right? The cash that I need to pay to the shareholders, I mean, the liability that I have has, is being converted into the capital. So bonus shares are issued to the existing shareholders instead of paying dividends. Instead of paying dividends in the form of cash, we pay it in the form of uh, share to the existing shareholders is what we call as bonus shares. And that is also where that kind of decision will also be taken in, uh, will be taken in a dividend division, uh, div dividend decisions and liquidity decision. This is one of the important decisions that a company has to make, the financial manager has to make, uh, have to make. For example, I would tell you, I, uh, what, if a person, if uh, he or she has many assets with her or him, uh, he has car, he has building, he has a uh, big house, he has uh, so many, so many uh, assets. Uh, let us take an example that he has 10 cars, 10 houses, uh, even there are so many assets that he has, so all, all the assets that he has are costly. But the person is unable to pay thousand rupees debt to his neighbor has taken a loan of thousand rupees from his neighbor he has borrowed only thousand rupees but he has all the luxurious cars at his house but then he's unable to pay thousand rupees will we call that particular person as a wealthy person he has wealth he has enough uh, assets car uh, uh, houses and all that he has but then he is unable to pay just thousand rupees to the neighbor Will we call that person as a wealthy person? No, definitely not. Will we call that person as financially sound? We will never, definitely, we will not call him as financially sound person. We would always call him that person is insolvent. Yes, similarly in the companies, if you invest all your money into the capital asset, but not in current asset, that the same situation will arise. For example, if you have uh, 10 crores in your hand we are invested all those 10 crore, uh, 10 crore in plant and machinery and all the capital assets but you don't have anything in the current asset you know what is current asset you know uh, anything that can be convertible into the form of cash within the stipulated period of one year okay if you uh, to meet out your uh, current liabilities right so anything any asset can be converted into the form of cash within the stipulated period of one year is called as current asset. The same situation. If you invest everything in capital asset, you don't have anything in your packet to, to manage your day-to-day -day expenses. Okay, this is where the uh, uh, you know working capital decision, all that comes into the picture. You know, you don't have anything in your packet, but everything is in the form of asset. You don't even have uh, 100 rupees in your packet, but still you have so much of asset you know, you won't be called as a wealthy person. Similarly, if the company invests everything in capital asset, it, it does not have any money to manage their day-to-day -day expenses called working capital. That company is not having liquidity, enough liquidity. So liquidity function has to be, decision has to be taken. You might wonder, okay, sir, I have uh, 10 crore rupees. Roughly, I allocate 2 crore rupees for current asset. Uh, rest of the amount, let it be for capital asset. Will, be, will my company can be called as a sound financial company? No, it's not. You know, it has to be optimum again. For example, you know, uh, if every amount is locked in capital asset, as I said before, it is a problem because you don't have any money to manage your expenses. Similarly, you have so much of money in current asset. Okay, you have so much of money. For example, 5 crore in uh, current asset and 5 crore in capital asset. That is also not advisable. Because when too much of money locked in current capital asset, it would earn some profit. It would earn some return. But when too much of money is locked in current asset, it won't earn enough return. 
that is the only difference right when too much of your investment is locked in current asset when it does not earn enough profit your company cannot earn profit your i mean your company a profit is locked in form of current asset so that is not advisable so only certain proportion until the accepted accepted level can be locked into the form of current asset so you have to decide in what proportion the current asset has to be maintained and what proportion capital asset has to be maintained that decision is what we call as liquidity decision so the poor liquidity management leads to the insolvency which means when you have poor uh, working capital management when very few amount very very less amount is uh, allocated for the current asset it would it would definitely lead, lead to insolvency and profitability as i said before it is the uh, proportion of capital asset liquidity it is a proportion of current asset it has to be matching off at a particular point where there is no uh, in favorable position to the company and of course commitment and recommitment of funds periodically has to be uh, checked over which means in the current asset and capital asset you know what much of amount that you have committed on committed to asset and that commitment and recommitment has to be periodically checked and has to be periodically aligned so these four decisions will be called as financial decisions and now and all your unit in business finance have these four elements called financing decision investment decision and dividend decision of course liquidity division decision this is what we are going to see about in and the next what are the sources of finance the sources of finance can be broadly classified into internal sources and external sources in internal sources you uh, you know uh, you uh, accumulate finance within the organization external you raise your capital from outside source a simple example okay there are five internal sources of finance one is investment startup and additional capital whatever it is in capital we have two different thing owners capital borrowed capital you know in balance sheet in the liability side investment will be given i mean capital will be given when you when a owner draw a certain amount for his personal use we will reduce that amount from capital minus drawings it is because he has invested some of his money to the capital in the form of capital he has given some money to the business that's why the capital is the, uh, is appearing in the liability side because in in the form of finance we have another concept called business entity concept where it's the company is different and the owner is different business is a different entity it has a perpetual succession in company okay it, anyhow it is a different entity so even if i give money to my own i mean to my my own company it means that the company has borrowed money from me okay so it is a liability for the company to pay it back to me so capital it is appearing in the liability side when my capital is when the amount that i have given uh, uh, is taken out of that particular company for my personal use that has to be deducted right that is what we call as owners investment the amount for which the owner or the promoter or the founder has given to the company okay so retained profits as i said before in the dividend decisions we said that a certain profit has to be retained with this okay internally we earn profit we distribute i mean uh, we take invest and we earn profit and certain amount of profit has to be retained with us retained profits and sale of stock if you have any stock with you uh, you know uh, normally you know the detailed things are being given here owners investment this money in which comes from the owners own savings okay uh, maybe in the form of startup capital when you start your business okay what is the money that you put in okay it is it may be in the form of additional capital when you expand your business it can also be given okay and this owners investment is basically a long term source of finance and the one of the advantages one of the advantage of owners investment is that it does not have uh, any interest payable right it, it doesn't have to be repaid okay because it's known as capital for small and now these advantages have been given in, uh, when it is considered for sole proprietorship not for the big companies okay the company's balance sheet is little different right internal source and retained your profit that's what i said when you earn profit some of your profit has been retained okay uh, it is when the profits made are plowed back into the business and it's a medium source of finance 
again it does not it doesn't have to be repaid and no interest is payable sale of stock okay when you have unsold stock when you uh, when you sell it and the certain, certain amount comes back to you and that can be your source of finance okay uh, here i have given an example this is what happens in the august sales and we are in obviously we are in august okay in tamil nadu we have called rd sales okay when all the unsold stocks are cleared you know the stock clearance sales the unsold stock is cleared out of which you earn some money right so this is also a kind of uh, internal source okay it is a quick way of uh, raising finance and then sale of fixed asset when your asset is not earning uh, that much of return and it is not productive enough or it is depreciating day by day you want to uh, you know replace your asset whatever the reason may be when you sell your fixed asset to someone else okay some portion of amount uh, comes into your, your business in the form of money right that is also uh, one of your internal uh, source okay then when you even when you have surplus asset okay surplus fixed asset which can be sold off right so that is one of the uh, internal source debt collection you know uh, this is out of trade credit you know then the nearby shops we always buy it for credit okay at the end of the month or uh, in between a week you know in between a month we give that particular money to the sh shopkeepers okay we uh, buy grocery items and the provisions in the nearby shop and at last we settle down the amount I mean we settle the uh, due in the month end right so till the time we are the debt tasks to the particular shopholders as uh, shopkeepers and they are our creditors so from the debt tasks whatever the collection is made that is also an internal source to the business an external source bank loan or overdraft when you accumulate and this is one of the important thing that i want to uh, highlight you know when you uh, you know uh, acquire money from the external source you have to be very cautious because these have certain risk and these have certain so these some of the resources are cost associated for example bank you know if you acquire loan from the bank it is cost associated which means you have to pay interest to it for the owner's capital you did, you did not pay any interest for this sold and sold uh, stock you did not pay any interest but these are main, all these are certain cost associated that is the main difference between internal source and the external source right let us come by uh, come one by one external source bank loan this is money uh, borrowed at an agreed rate of interest over a period of time that's what i said at an agreed rate of interest you have to pay certain interest to the particular uh, bank okay this is medium and this is also can be a long term okay and of course uh, from bank we can also uh, use short term as well there are certain avenues like uh, commercial wills uh this is short term loan okay factoring is a short term loan okay of course factoring is not uh, regularly done in indian banks but then it is quite common in usa so that is also uh, in bank loans either it can be short term medium or long term but normally we acquire loans for long term and medium term right and then bank overdraft bank overdraft is something you know uh, i have saving bank account right if i have uh, 5000 rupees in my account i can uh, withdraw only 5000 rupees not more than that but if i have a current account i do have a business for the business i have an account that account can be called as current account okay, for individual it is saving account for business it is current account okay i have only 5000 rupees i have taken it out i have withdrawn but i need one more thousand no so i uh, i mean i write a check to the uh, uh, another person for a thousand rupees can it be taken can be taken into the account in terms of bank now can he collect money from the bank yes it is possible to a certain extent even if your bank account does not have enough balance you still can uh, write checks even if your account does not have any, any balance so that's what we may say as bod or bank overdraft which means the excess of amount that the bank renders 
okay more than the back on balance is what we call as bank overdraft it is cost associated you have to pay interest to it and it's a short term source of finance okay when it is taken for extensive period and the uh, interest charge is quite high then additional partners you know if it is in a you know uh, my business firm is a partnership firm I, I i want capital to my business i can add additional partners okay i can add one more partner into the i can bring in one more partner into the my partnership firm he, he will introduce certain amount of capital so through him i get some amount of profit uh, some amount of capital okay through which i acquired some money so this is external source right and when he brings in extra capital i have to distribute the cap uh, you know return as well share issue and this is what we have to discuss a bit elaboratively share issue normally shares are basically two types ordinary shares and preference shares ordinary shares or equity shares okay so equity shares it is a form of ownership people who ever buy equity share tend to become the owner of the company right they have every right whatever the owner has the particular person who has bought share is also having as a right to vote as a right to participate in the meetings annual general meetings he'll technically called as a board i mean um, shareholder is a right to vote and he, he is the person who will enjoy uh, if the company earns more profit right a lot of pro i mean it earns more profit in the particular year he has every right to enjoy more profit he has no specific uh, percentage of profit dividend will be paid in no proportion which means if he has given only 10 uh, 10 rupees uh, share there is no special fixed rate of dividend for the equity shareholders wherein preference shareholders have okay for equity shareholders he is typically a owner owner will not enjoy only fixed amount of return he will enjoy if there is more profit he will enjoy more if there is no profit he enjoys a loss I many he doesn't enjoy the loss but then he enjoys nothing right similarly the equity shareholders when he when the company earns more profit he enjoys more if the when the company is not earning anything he is he doesn't uh, have any uh, legal right to uh, you know get proportion in the profit but whereas the other uh, form of share is called as preference share we say preference it means he has the preference when it comes in the profit you know even when there is a profit or when there is no profit he has a fixed amount of dividend he has to has to be given to him if he has invested 100 rupees if it says that 10 percentage of uh, dividend has to be paid of course he is eligible to get even if the profit is there or not he has to be paid that 10 percentage but he does not have any uh, right to participate in the meeting he does not have any right to vote his right is only is limited to get the dividend at first okay so uh, share there are two types of share in which it has to be distributed it is completely depending upon the company right so there are so much of uh, conditions or uh, leasing it is a contractual obligation between lesser and lessee right it is a contractual agreement it is an agreement to use a particular asset for a stipulated period of time right leasing is like a renting of an asset it is like a renting an asset but make sure that rent is be uh, is considered as a capital expenditure that's one of the important element right and higher purchase higher purchase uh, we know that it is very uh, you know uh, it is something that we come across every day right it allows a business to obtain assets without need to pay a large amount of rent which means in the initial you don't need to pay a large amount it can be paid in investment i mean installments okay when all the repayments have been done right the particular person who has made the in, uh, installments can own the asset right so this is a medium source of finance and of course one of the disadvantages of it it is little expensive right 
then mod cage mod cage is done okay over a property you have to be a little uh, yeah, you should know that hypothecation is uh, done only on movable assets mod cage is done on, uh, on properties like land and stuff pledge can be done in ornaments so these are the simple differences and of course it is also a long term asset normally uh, mod cage is done more than five years or for years it is it is not a short term or medium term normally it is done for uh, from three years to 25 years it is being done so mod cage is basically done on uh, properties trade credit this is what we had seen a little bit earlier okay pay um, buy now and pay later this is that's what we said in the debt collection okay trade credit is that it allows the buyer to buy things on credit and give that credit after a particular period of time without any interest when it crosses more than the stipulated time it, uh, the particular buyer is charged certain interest trade credit uh, we, we we have seen that we would see that in the working capital management like operating cash uh, cycle and cash cycle stuff that's where credit trade uh, trade credit appears into the picture typically typically in india it is normally uh, given per month you know for a month okay so uh, the typical trade credit period is 30 days and it is a short term finance right so trade credit is buy now and pay it later with, without any interest right so when it charged more than the stipulated period for example if it crosses more than 31 days or 32 days and then the interest is charged so other sources of finance for a company for a big company perspective treasury bills or even for individuals treasury bills are the agreement i mean uh, or that uh, financial instrument that rba issues for example if a government wants money right if government wants money it issues treasury bills through rba so if i buy a treasury bill government gets money right so what i get okay so what uh, how do we say that this is a source of finance so i pay money government gets money how can i treat this as a you know source of finance you know what government does is that it pays and you know it releases the treasury bills in discount and redeems it par for example you know uh, it uh, it now if it issues at uh, 80 rupees you you'll give 80 rupees when it redeems it will pay you 100 rupees so that 20 rupees difference is what we call this uh, the additional amount of it is a kind of uh, investment that we are making but it is also can be convert can be uh, treated as a source of finance right and normally it is very short term and it this particular uh, area is the area where there is no risk associated because you are dealing with you're dealing money with the government so when you deal uh, you know with an investment with government it has no investment i mean it has no risks involved commercial paper you know when the companies uh, which are very strong enough in terms of uh, you know it's a, when the company has sound financial structure when that company issues a short term um, financial avenue that can be called as commercial paper even it is also issued at a discount and redeemed at par it normally it has the maturity period of um, one month three months and six months and one year normally it is said in days 30 days uh, 90 days 182 days and 364 days these are the maturity period of commercial papers and commercial bills or uh, bills discounting okay uh, now uh, bills arises when the trade credit appears you know as we said uh, there are little link between the things that we discussed earlier commercial bills bills appear only when then when their uh, trade credit appears okay so as we said in the uh, previous slide trade credit is normally given for 30 days okay it doesn't mean that seller won't need any money for 30 days seller might need money even in the 15th day or even in the 10th day or even in the very first day okay but he cannot claim the buyer he have to pay the money immediately to me because you have given enough you have granted him 30 days to pay his money back so he'll not pay you any here 
So what you can do with that, you can submit a bill into a bank and the bank will remit 80% to 85% of money back to you. So that is what is bills discounting or commercial bills. So it is quite common in USA, but it is not quite familiar in India. Okay, certificates of deposit. Normally people confuse certificate of deposit with fixed deposit. It is it has this uh, certain kind of features similar to fixed deposit, but it's not one and the same. Fixed can uh, fixed as uh, deposits cannot be transferable to someone else, but certificate of deposit is transferable. Okay, certificate of deposit that you deposit certain amount of fixed amount of uh, into a bank. Okay, so that is transferable, right? It has certain amount of deposits. I mean, certain amount of interests or or some return call money or notice money or you know uh, it is quite common in USA now you might have heard about MIBAR um, Mumbai interbank offer rate certain you know in investment banking arena uh, uh, corporates they get money they uh, they exchange money uh, for for a day for two days for a week when a, when they need a huge amount of money for a shorter period of time call money or notice money uh, is issued. It is kind of inter, uh, uh, how can we say that, you know, in investment banking, when corporate expect, I mean, need money, okay, it goes to the LMA, which means Loan Market Association, where the collective of investors will be there. Large pool of investment investors will be there, okay, for a day, for two days, for a week, you can get money for a rate at which uh, LIBAR or MIBAR or even CBAR is being uh, fixed. For example, MIBAR is Mumbai Interbank offered rate. LIBAR is normally normally for corporate finance or for uh, investment finance. I mean, uh, LIBAR is the standard rate on which uh, you know investments are exchanged, investments are uh, collected for a day or uh, for more than for a week. So what we uh, call in investment banking is called prime loans. Prime loans and uh, you know uh, rollover loans. Those loans are very 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 short term in nature, but that would be uh, so uh, that would be of a uh, huge amount of investment. Okay, that would be uh, between the corporates. That won't be for individuals. It will be only for given for businesses, huge businesses. Okay, so LMA is loan market association in where all the investors will be there for uh, they'll invest their money and their money will be distributed to the people who are needed who are in need and at the rate of LIBAR London Interbank offer rate that will be fixed every day okay so that is what we call this call money or market, uh, money market all right so all these are the sources of finance so what Factors affecting source of, source of finance is the purpose and time period. Okay, what is the purpose for which the finance is acquired? Time period. How long the finance will be needed? And that's what we said. What is short term? What is medium term? And what is long term? Due to the time period, we say that money. How much of amount is required? Is it very uh, less? Even the owner can uh, arrange it. If it is very huge, then the owner cannot arrange it. They has to go for the different avenues okay and the ownership and sizes of the business size is very small if the size of the business is very small you don't, you, you don't need to go for a chair issue and all that you can still buy a loan you can arrange it somehow with your friends so, you know if you even if you arrange with your friends or relatives that is also owner's capital right so all these factor purpose time period and amount and ownership size of the business decide what kind of source that you're going to acquire so the, all these are the basics of financial uh, business finance and let us discuss deeply in the next session.